What up YouTube? Salvador Rigman here and today we're talking about the top 10 income sources if you want to generate passive income, if you're looking for passive income opportunities in 2017 and 2018. So I'm going to very quickly run through these and then I'm going to share you a little bit, um, share with you a little bit about my own story and sort of why I'm talking about this topic and also the damaging effect that business had on my own life and also that traditional business had on my own sort of mental and emotional state. So it's kind of embarrassing. So I'll be sharing that at the end of the video. So the first way that you can generate passive income is online. It's putting out content like blog posts, YouTube videos, podcasts. You're putting out content into the world and you're monetizing it in some way. It could be via advertisements, could be via say AdSense, that program, sponsorships, in some way, you're putting out content and it's going to continue to earn money if traffic continues to be sent to it. So it could also be some of the other things I'm gonna be talking about like affiliate marketing or recommending other products or your own products. But basically, number one, you're putting out content and you're earning passive income because of that content being in advertising or other techniques. Number two is creating your own digital products. So these digital products could be an ebook, it could be a guide, could even be a physical book on Amazon, could be on Audible, on audiobook. I have four books on Amazon, physical and digital version. I have two audiobooks. I have two online courses. These are one way you can create passive income online because you don't have to be there for the transaction to happen. You know, someone can come in and they can buy your program or your book. You don't have to be there so you can quote unquote earn money in your sleep or you can have someone buy it all the way over there across the world who you don't know and you don't have to be there for the transaction to happen. The next way is to uh, recommend other people's products and services, and this is called affiliate marketing. You know, affiliate marketing gets a lot of flack. It's also, eh, there's some people in the industry that are definitely a little bit scammy, but there are also legitimate marketers out there like myself that are recommending products, services, companies in my niche that people should go and check out. And every single time I do and someone goes and buys something or someone goes and decides to sign up for a service, I get a small affiliate check. And those commissions add up over time. You know, if you're continually talking about a certain company or product in a YouTube video or in your blog post and people are slowly beginning to check out that company over time, I've had people check out companies of a blog post I've written like three years ago and then I get an affiliate check when that person buys the product or they buy whatever it is. So affiliate marketing is a great way to earn income. I would say though, you do need a bit of an audience before you get started. This is not something you can just start um, if you don't have no idea how to generate traffic or you have no idea how to actually sell things. It's not the, the way to get started, but it's very powerful once you reach a certain point where you have a bit of a following online. Um, you know, more and more, I'd say maybe the past two years, uh, affiliate marketing has become a sizable part of my own income, but that's only because I took the time to build up an audience of over 20,000 uh, email followers, email subscribers, you know, uh, people who listen to my podcast, YouTube, my blog, etc. So I have a bit of a following already to, to base that off of. Next, the next uh, passive income opportunity you can take advantage of is creating a physical product. And we're seeing this much more in the way of online stores, like things like Shopify, um, things like using WooCommerce and WordPress to set up an online store. Um, with my own blog and et cetera, it's all about Kickstarter, Indiegogo, crowdfunding. And I've just seen so many people create six and seven figure businesses by creating a product that they can sell via an online store. So this is something that you yourself would create. It takes time obviously to do that, but once you do, you can pretty much automate most of the process and you can begin to earn passive income with a Shopify store or with an online store like that. Um, if you wanna check out Shopify, I'll be including a link down below also so you can look into that if you are interested in that. So the next way to earn passive income online, and we talked about um, creating content, 
digital products, physical products, affiliate marketing, etc. I think that the next powerful way to earn passive income is to actually invest a bit of your own money into be it the stock market, be it into bonds and index fund. Um, that's really once you begin to get going and you want to earn passive income, that's pretty much as passive as it gets. You know, you're earning dividends or you're earning distributions or whatever it is. Um, this is a very good way if you're young in the long term to set up a powerful passive income stream. So what should you do if you're young? Well, if you're, you're really young, you're like you're my age, you know, you're in mid, mid 20s or even younger. I would actually recommend starting with creating an IRA account. An IRA account is a retirement account where basically your income can grow tax free. And at a certain age, I believe it's 65, you can begin to withdraw from that account. You might even be required to. Um, but the powerful thing about that is your income is growing without the tax man reaching their hands in and taking a certain percentage of that. And you would basically set up an index fund that um, is just a listing of say the S&P 500 or a basket of stocks and bonds um, that you would then put your money into. The, there are a lot of people out there who will say be day traders or people who are investing in individual stocks, you know, trying to get a really good uh, price on a company or trying to take advantage of price fluctuations. I wouldn't really call that passive income because you have to invest your own time. You have to invest your own energy into researching these stocks and such. So it's, it's more of, I think that's more of a service business, more of putting your own um, thoughts and research into execution. Like you have to put in work if you want to earn more uh, income that way. Passive income is more so just autopilot. So I wouldn't look at, look at it as that way, but you can debate me on that. You know, leave, let me know in the comments down below. Um, in addition to investing in say the stock market or an index fund, particularly Roth IRA if you're younger, um, you could also look into something like a REIT. Uh, one of the things I've been talking a lot about is real estate crowdfunding. So real estate crowdfunding, the notable website out there that you should check out is Fundrise. And Fundrise, you can actually put your money on autopilot and you can invest in real estate via this platform. It's really cool. And it's also relatively recent that you've been able to gain access to these types of deals for non-accredited investors. So if you wanna check out Fundrise, I'll also include a link down below that you can look into that, but that is another way that you can earn passive income. So what about also if you have a little bit of money in addition saved up, uh, but you know you don't wanna go to the stock market route, you don't wanna be thinking about bonds or real estate or anything like that, what else can you do? Well, number one, I actually think that advertising, particularly if you already have another product or you're trying to sell an affiliate product, is a great way to earn passive income. So you don't typically think of advertising as passive income, but hear me out here, okay, hear me out. Um, when you're using, say, Facebook, you can now automate a lot of these campaigns. You can budget, say, 10, 15, 20 dollars every single day for Facebook to use to bring visitors to a product or to your website or to a webinar or to an email list. You've automated the marketing when you've done that. And you can also set it so that this is only going to last for a specific amount of time. There are a lot of different ways you can basically put your Facebook advertising on autopilot. And that way, you can put in, say, $1,000 and you can get $3,000 back. And you're not working for that. You know, you're just, you're putting the money up front and obviously you have to do all the right targeting and have a good creative and all that kind of stuff, but you're not putting in money to advertise. It's doing everything for you. You're just basically checking, okay, is this a profitable ad? If it is, awesome. It's generating more and more passive income from say my digital course sales or my eBooks or whatever product you're trying to sell. So I would actually lump the skills that go into advertising into the passive income uh, category. Now, in addition to, to advertising and a, a lot of the other techniques and opportunities that we've talked about on this video, um, I do think that there is something to be said for you know more of these um, traditional businesses, like say a physical product business, and ways to turn that into a passive income stream. 
So specifically, I'm referring to Amazon. So I talked about you know Shopify, setting up your own online store, creating your own product. You can also create passive income from Amazon. And a lot of you probably have seen these people who promise like Amazon riches, or like you can make so much money on Amazon, you know, all of these different things. And to a certain degree, it is true. Whether it's white labeling, whether it's identifying profitable niches and products that you can sell and putting up the money for inventory and then selling via the Amazon marketplace, you can actually create a very scalable business. And by that I mean without a lot of your own input and time because Amazon gets regular customers. They get people typing into Amazon looking for different products and looking at products that are recommended for them, etc. And that takes a lot of the headache and a lot of the time out of you doing your own selling. So where traditionally, maybe you would have to educate people and get them interested in your product, Amazon is doing all of that for you. So it actually, whenever time is taken out of, taken out of the equation, it is a recipe for passive income. So it's naturally not gonna be as passive as say affiliate income or something like that, but by looking into the Amazon marketplace as a whole and how you can either um, use it to sell your own products or use it to sell white label products or whatever, I think that's a really great way to begin to earn a passive income stream. So the next one, um, geez, we talked about so many right now. I'm trying to really run through all of these to make this just a digestible video. And then we can go into each of these in, in longer videos. Um, the next one is something that I have used in my own business. And this is a productized service. So what is a productized service? A traditional service-based business, say you're um, creating a project proposal. If you're doing your social media agency, you create a project proposal and what you're gonna be doing, which is tailored for this individual business. And obviously you're earning decent money doing that, but in, to a high degree, you're trading your own time for that money, for that revenue. With a productized service business, you have a very set number of things that you're going to do or that you're offering. You have a set price, and if people buy that package, then that's what they're going to get. It's very like McDonald's-like in that everything is standardized. You know, the entire service, all the processes, everything you do is standardized. Um, a good example of this would be Say you have a transcription business, or say you have a podcast editing business, and for this amount, this is what we're going to do exactly. This is the rate per word, etc. And the benefit of this is, when you've nailed down all of these question marks, it's a lot easier to take yourself out of the equation and to hire other people to do these various tasks. And since all of the communication is standardized, all of the, the offerings are standardized. There isn't really like any haggling or bargaining with the customers. Um, everyone knows what to expect. So it's very easy to remove yourself from the equation. So let's recap here a bit. Um, we talked about putting content out on the internet and monetizing it as, as passive income. We talked about digital products, um, eBooks, courses, etc. We talked about affiliate marketing, you know, selling other people's products. We talked about your own physical products and sort of what goes into that, selling on Shopify, et cetera. We've talked about, um, you know, making money from uh, putting money aside, I guess, for index funds or for IRAs, um, using your own money to make passive income from dividends, um, things like that. We talked about real estate crowdfunding. One way to, to earn passive income is through REITs, and the, the website I mentioned was Fundrise. So that's number six. We talked about advertisements. You can actually advertise and automate it all on Facebook and use that as a source for passive income. We talked about Amazon. Amazon is a very powerful marketplace, a very powerful ecosystem where you can earn passive income that way. And um, lastly, you know, we, we talked about, uh, geez, they're all like jumbling together in my mind here, um, the, a productized service, a productized service business where everything is standardized and everything is um, just already set, preset. So it's very easy to make this a passive income centric service business. Now the last way 
that I'm going to be talking about on this YouTube video. Um, we've seen more and more creative types and creators on YouTube use this. And this is using a site like Patreon to do subscription-based crowdfunding. Or you can even use other sites to do donation-based crowdfunding. Um, and this is basically crowdfunding, as you would think about it, on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, but instead it's subscription-based, meaning that you're getting income every single month um, from these, these people that are supporting you. And that is passive. You're not doing anything to work for it aside from adhering to your regular schedule of putting out videos. Maybe you have to put out some more videos um, in order to entice them to join that community. But to a very high degree, that is generally passive. Um, and you know, I think of it more as um, a very high leverage for the amount of time that you're putting in. So this is a lot of different ways, a lot of different opportunities in 2016 and 2017 and 2018 and 2019 that you can earn passive income online. Um, and these are, these are just quite simply ways that anyone out there can do. It doesn't take tremendous brain power to start a blog or to, to start a podcast or to start a YouTube channel. The main differentiator here is you have to be willing to take action. You have to be willing to try things out. You have to be willing to put in the hard work up front to say create an online course in order to reap the rewards in the future. So you do have to have a little bit of hunger and drive. And even if you do have the, the money component, you know, you have a budget, you have to be wise and you have to be knowledgeable about how to actually spend that money. Otherwise, you're just gonna waste it and you're not gonna create an income stream off of that. So I said I would share a little bit about myself. This is a you know, 16 minute video, so I hope you guys have stayed around. Um, th this is sort of um, something that I haven't talked about very much, but basically for me, the reason I started to um, put more focus on a lifestyle business model over a traditional business was that I found traditional business ended up running me versus me running the business. And what I mean by that, it was, I was a slave to my business, you know? I put in all of my effort, all of my time, all of my energy, all of my mental capacity, my emotional capacity into this business and it was taking over my life. It was literally ruining relationships. It was ruining my own sense of equilibrium and calm and happiness. And it was for what? More money maybe, more income, but it wasn't, uh, I would just say, high quality income in that it didn't make me feel good. It didn't enhance my life. And there's always the rationalization there that because you're young, because you can handle it, that you should do that, that you should push yourself to your limit, et cetera. But I think that for many people out there, you don't necessarily want millions and millions of dollars. You know, you want what comes with millions and millions of dollars. Um, I read a really great book called How to Get Rich by Felix Dennis. If you haven't read that book, go and check it out. It's a life changer. Um, but basically in this book, Felix Dennis, who is worth, worth like maybe $500 million, he says that the only reason he himself wanted to get rich was so that he could do whatever he wanted. So he could do whatever he wanted at any time of the day. And that could be reading a book, that could be writing poetry, that could be watching Netflix, you know, it could be going to the beach, could be working on a whole other crazy business idea. Whatever it is, we tend to want to do other things besides work. And we sort of rationalize that once we earn a certain amount of money, we can finally do those things. Here's a great saying, um, if you've ever watched the movie Wall Street. Wall Street, you know, incredibly classic movie. Um, and basically Bud Fox, who's one of the main character basically, he says that once I earn a bundle of cash, you know, and I get out of this racket, meaning Wall Street, by the time I'm 30, I'll be able to ride my motorcycle across China. And it's like this grand vision he has of like no longer being beholden to money and the grind and the hard work and just the, the stress and emotional turmoil of every single day doing something or doing activities that you don't necessarily wanna do and being subject to bosses, all that kind of stuff. And that kind of, that really resonated for me because I'm thinking, why are we working and saving up our time and our money for some future event? 
what ended up happening with me was in 2014, um, I was really, you know, in the trenches with my business, working hard, grinding a lot, and it took a, a toll on me in terms of causing a lot of emotional stress. And I was kind of dealing with that by partying a lot and drinking a lot. And I was, you know, in my very early 20s. Um, so it's kind of normal. Ma you know, youth masks a lot of problems that happen in our society. It's very normal for a guy who's young and doing well to go out and party and have a good time and such like that. But what ended up happening with me was I found I was using it as a way to deal with these emotions. And a lot of people also in New York City do the exact same thing because they work very stressful jobs. And it led to sort of the culmination was I ended up one night drinking too much, partying too much, um, I didn't eat beforehand, and I actually fell down this staircase and I ended up fracturing the bones around my eye. And people thought I might need surgery. Um, my, my, my whole entire face like swelled up and was like black and blue and it looked horrible. Um, and I fell unconscious, you know, I went unconscious and I woke up in the hospital. And I was still like drunk and there was like drugs in my system um, from the medication they gave me. And it was just a horrible, horrible experience for me. And from that event, I took away that while yes, I do want to be successful in business, I also want a lifestyle that makes me happy. That I don't just want to be someone that has a lot of money. I also want these various other things in my life, whether it's good friends or a nice body, a nice physique, and healthy living, and um, you know, interesting hobbies. I love to fly drones. You, know, you can check out my other video where I do drone tutorials. There are all these other things I want in addition to income. So that's really when I started to focus much more on passive income from my business, and it was it just led to a lot of um, success I didn't anticipate, and a freedom in my life that I never thought was possible. You know, I never thought I could just film other videos that would not lead to profitability, and I was just doing it for fun. Or I never thought I could take an entire day off and go to the beach and just enjoy that. Uh, it's crazy to me how much my lifestyle has changed um, since I've begun to put more of an emphasis on generating things that create passive income for me versus just doing things to make more and more money. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Hope it was helpful for you. I also hope you resonate with my story a bit. I can go more into it if you would like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, if you did like this video, give me a thumbs up so that I know. And finally, if you want more videos like this, guys, come subscribe. Um, you'll get an email notification every single time I put out a new video. And that way you'll stay up to date on the best online marketing tactics, the best online marketing strategies, everything that I'm learning that I'm going to be sharing with you. So I invite you to subscribe. But again, my name is Sal and thank you for joining me.